All right, for my Mustang guys at the quick update. So, in my video earlier, my mechanic that works on my car called me. And the reason why I haven't been updating uh, uh, you know, a lot of the Mustang content is simple. I have a flywheel problem with the clutch. And so I can't really give you guys a good Mustang video. I know you guys want to see the, the 0 to 60 pulls, 61 30 pulls, all that stuff. A little quick backstory. Last year in April, well, March, my original transmission of the car went out. I had the uh, McLeod put in. I had just supercharged the car the year prior. My car was supercharged going on two and a half years now. I uh, supercharged it in 2022. And then in, in uh, the same year I, I supercharged, I had the McLeod RC put in there. Now, I wasn't aware at the time that the original transmission was already going out it was bad it was already bad because of the way that transmission is the sync rolls in that transmission and a list of other things right and what ended up happening was after i supercharged it uh i remember i went to grab a gear you know i think it was third or fourth Heard this loud commotion in the transmission. Didn't think nothing of it. Because the car was still functioning probably. I thought maybe the clutch was going bad. The clutch, I got to chain. The guy did say the clutch was like kind of gone, but it wasn't that bad. But the sink rolls in the transmission was already bad. And I didn't know it. I think that aspirated the problem. So when I put the McLeod RXT on there with the flywheel, because at that time my goal was to build a thousand horsepower car. Then I started thinking that might be too much power. But it's, Better be safe than sorry to have too much clutch than not enough clutch. So I put that on there. And then last year, I was taking my uh, son over to uh, speech there because he has autism. And uh, I left the light. It was a little slick outside. So first kind of got a little sideways. Traction control was on. And I think this is what done it too because traction control being on means... The ECU cuts traction. That means on a transmission standpoint, you know, uh, it dumbs down and, and does certain things. I'm not no biomechanic, but I know the traction control law. It, it it does certain things to the transmission and everything else. So I went from first, tire started to spin, went to second. The moment I grabbed second, I heard this loud. And the video's on the channel. I crunked the car. I thought, you know, was it the clutch, transmission? Lo and behold, transmission was messed up. So I ended up having them put a new transmission in. I wanted a Barton, but not Barton. The um, Ben Caliber stage three, but they were backed up for like four months at this time. So they replaced the OEM transmission. And at the time, I didn't think that the flywheel and clutch was damaged. Okay. So I had the Barton installed, transmission put back in, brand new. Uh, they filled it with the motorcraft, recommended fluid, all this good stuff. And um, all of a sudden, when I would get to a certain RPM and come out versus second, I would get this RPM lockout. And over time, it's been getting worse. And so what's going on is the flywheel, because that's an aggressive material with the McLeod RXT. The flywheel and the clutch mechanism, there's, a, there's an issue where the clutch... When you go to push the clutch in for it to disengage in the flywheel, the clamping force of the clutch and flywheel, the clutch isn't disengaging. Therefore, you're getting a lockout issue. Okay. A lot of times it could be a throwout bearing. You know, it could be a lot of things going on with that. But it's the same gear that I fucked up my original transmission in that is causing the same issue. If that makes sense. So from a mechanical standpoint, and from some mechanics that looked at my car, they all came to the conclusion that, yeah, this is a clutch and flywheel problem, primarily the flywheel itself. Now, since knowing all this, I still do drive the car, but I have to drive like a grandma first and second, because low RPM, I can go into gear. It's only when I'm between two and sometimes five that that happens. Uh, every now and then when I go with five to seven, it might do it, but it's rare. But I have to push the clutch in, wait about a second or two, then grab the gear. And, of course, if you're ever trying to race doing that, you're going to get smoked. 
After that, second, third, third, fourth, fourth, the fifth, fifth, sixth, no problems. No problems. But first to second, there's a problem there. So I got the phone with the mechanic that I've been working with my car. And uh, we're going to go ahead. He's a spec clutch dealer. And he told me he, he go with the stage three. I can't remember the, the proper specs, but the single disc, stage three. Uh, he gave me the price, how much it's going to cost to put it in. He just got to order the price and order all the parts. I'm looking at probably about out the door for everything, about $2,500, $2,600. I'm also going to be uh, swapping out my oil cash cans to some ventilated ones because uh, I'm at 10 PSI and I'm trying to keep this engine for longevity. Uh, now, I have some trip on my car. You guys know that. So I'm not always in boost. And the uh, blow off valve from Tile doesn't close completely unless you make two PSI. Now, the way the car is tuned, however, by Lund and with any boosted car, more than half throttle is full, is fully open. So if I'm not on it all the way, if I'm less than half throttle, it's it's not going to be a boost. I have to go more than half throttle to close it down. So normally I hear the blow off valve and the blower most of the time because I'm not in boost most of the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not like a whipple. Well, whipple, there's no blow off valve. The manifold is essentially now the supercharger because it sits on top of the manifold. You replace the manifold, for say. So that whipple is always under boost. It's the moment you get on the gas, there's no blow off valve. The air is coming through from the, the uh, stock air box. A lot of times, what whipple utilizes or any, any, any positive to play with supercharger. The stock air box. It's replaced with open coal element a lot of times. And so it's sucking air right into the struck opposite, right? There's no need for a blow-off valve because the intercooler a lot of times is built into the Whipple itself. So the air is being forced in directly. So that means that it's under constant boost all the time. And that's why with a Whipple, you make a lot more torque down low than with a triple supercharger. So... A lot of people get the ventilated, you know, uh, catch cans with a Whipple set up or a pot of the supercharger set up normally because it's under boost all the time. And that's causing the lanyards and, and the, 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 the rings around your pistons and rods and shit. They're under custom pressure all the time. Whether it's a centrifugal or even with a turbo set up, it's not under that all the time because you have a blow off valve. Now, turbos can be just like Whipples. It all depends on the wastegate. The wastegate regulates the boost when the boost comes on. How much boost you're trying to make. You can manipulate that. Not so much the blow off valve. The blow off valve main primary function is to release the charge air once the throttle plate closes. So it, it won't force its way past the throttle. Uh, you know, as the plate closes. That's when you get that turbo flutter. It causes a, a compressor surge as that air backs back towards the supercharger or with the blower itself. So the blowout valve may have a 10 pound spring in it. That's when it closes. But once you come off throttle, that air needs to ventilate. That's the blowout valve function. Wastegate function is a little bit different. Wastegate is based on the exhaust. The exhaust is what drives the turbo. Depending on what spring you have in that wastegate is going to dictate how much turbo pressure you're going to see inside the block. And so you can manipulate that fucking wastegate to come on full force, depending on how it's set up at 3000 RPM. And that means once that wastegate allows the air to get into the charge pipe to get up to the throttle plate, the, the spring in the in the uh, blow valve have to match the spring in the wastegate, though. You want them to work the right way. Once that happens, it can be 2500. You might get all the boost pressure right there at one time. So that will make tuning turbos a little bit more in depth. And that's why it's recommended that with turbos, you get vented fucking uh, uh, catch cans because you can build a lot of pressure down low with turbos. That's why it costs a lot more to build the turbo set, uh, set up because the weight gates manipulate everything with a turbo. Every fucking thing. So... Since I'm making 10 pounds on the 120 on G2 head, I'm going to be probably going to the G3 next year. 
because I got to get a clutch now. That's going to delay me getting the, the uh, fuel system in the car for E85 from four innovations, but I'm fine with that. Just take your time. I'm building the car. The car's paid for. So I'm building around the car. I'm taking my time. I'm, I'm, I'm working on all the stuff that need to be worked on first before trying to add more power, if that makes sense. Uh, I might end up doing the, uh, well, I know I am, the steel to stop the hot kit before I put the uh, fuel system in the car. Because you want the car to be safe, efficient. I know I got to get a drive shaft. I got a two piece. I'm going to go for a one piece. Drive shaft. All that stuff matters in the pursuit of trying to make power. And now I plan on changing my axle back because it's still the stock axle back. We know I got BBK long tubes, uh, high flow caps, and X pipe, which leads into the stock axle back itself. So I want to upgrade the axle back because I got the active exhaust. So I want to do the active back um, exhaust. Upgrade that. Put the dry shaft on, the steel to stop the hop kit, probably take my up and lower control arms, make them stronger. Cause I got 64,000 miles in that car. That's all me. I got the car brand new with no miles on it. So if it wasn't for the amount of stuff I gotta do now in town, cause I go, I go from my home tomorrow and back here twice a day. That's 60 miles every day, Monday through Friday. So doing that type of traveling and then, you know, my, Weekend travel sometime here in the state of Georgia or going out of state that add the miles up quick. Well, for all that, I probably only have 40,000 miles on the car. The car is four years old, so it's getting close. Time and chain belts and all that gonna be getting changed. I get to 75, maybe 80,000 miles. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do before I just try to add more power, and that's more important. So that's what's going on. Um, with the with the car right now. Uh, somebody asked about the complete build of the car. Here's a rundown. Uh, so you guys can know what's on the car. I got the uh, ESS G2 blower with the G3 intercooler with the tile blow-off valve with a 2 PSI spring. Um, what else is on there? G2, G3, 120 millimeter pulley um, on, on, on the vehicle. Uh, I got the... Uh, the uh b the, the the booster pump from what's that bmp whatever the the, the, the bat bap booster pump vortex uh i got the fic fuel injectors in the car to 1000s uh i got two jlt oil catch cans on the car uh i got the board short door shifter with the uh, mcleod rxt 1000 clutch the bbk long tubes high flow and x pipe is on the car lowering springs in the car uh i upgraded my brake systems um the brakes and rotors uh, i think they're extreme um past some I, american muscle uh, i i put the picture up on because i, I don't want to get it all fucked up um what else on the car is tuned by lung i got a boost gauge in the car um, I got a diffuser from Drake on the back. I got the round of fog lights, little diffusers. I got some S and R lowering springs in the car. Those are stock wheels. Uh, the tires is as I had the extreme contact from Continental. Now these are the pro contacts from Continental, but I'm gonna go to a stickier tie eventually. Um, make sure I ain't leaving nothing else out. I got four hood struts on the car. Um, uh, from uh, CJ Pony Parts. Um, I had, I had a, uh, strut tower brace in the car. I took that off cause it fucked up my, uh, struts, uh, the strut boot. So the next strut tower brace I'm putting on the car will be a four performance one that doesn't require you to have to bolt down on top of the strut boots themselves. It just goes to the two bolts before the strut boot tower. So I'm gonna go with that next. Gosh, dog. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Vortex boost pump, FIC 1000. Oh, NGK spot plus gap at 0.028. Uh, but once I get ready to run E85, uh, Alex from, from Lung, because he was the one that originally gave me the tune for the car, uh, told me to pre regap them. Probably gonna get, just get some new ones and uh, re gap them at 0 0.026. Also, the uh, intake uh, runners, the MRIC, the intake manifold runner control arms, they are locked out. I got them locked out as well. And I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. I ain't missing nothing else. That's it. That's, so that's what's on the car right now. The car hasn't been dyno yet with the 120 on the vehicle. Uh, I know the last time it was dynoed, it made 598. That was the STD version. The SAE version, it, it, it dumbed it down to 590, I think. So, if I'm a bed man with the 120 millimeter pulley on the vehicle, it's probably going to net me because I got full. The exhaust is, is, is 
full, uh, full exhaust. It's not no free flow. Cats on the car. So one 20 millimeter pulley on my vehicle should give me somewhere at 10 pounds of boost on 93 between 630 and 650. Somewhere in there depends on 93. If I add a little octane boost, because I keep some octane booster in the car, it might jump up between 640 and 660. 670 will be something that would catch me off guard. Now, if I remove those catalytic converters, which I probably will, uh, and keep them off on test time for inspection again, uh, and then, you know, because I, I, I got the, the other stuff on the car to not to fuck with the lights, right? If I decide to do that, then I'm pretty sure it'll make 680, 690. Because when you take cats off of a blower car or a booster car, you can net about 30 to 40 more horsepower easy. So if it makes, say, 640 on what it is now on 93, if I remove those cats, it could jump up to about 670. 680 will be wild on 93 at 10 pounds of boost with no cats. As an octane booster, it could be anywhere from say, like I say, uh, six seventy to about maybe six ninety, maybe seven hundred horsepower, because it's going to give me more time because of the octane booster. The octane is a lot better. So, all in all, I have a six hundred horsepower car, somewhere between six thirty and six fifty, uh, and 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 that's because of the all set up and and, and the centrifugal and the blower itself. If I was to go to a G three head. Uh, it'll probably be making close to 660 at the 10 PSI mark with everything on the car because that blower allows more air to, to get blown into the car at the same PSI rate uh, versus the G2. Uh, the only reason why I go G3 to begin with because this is my first 5.0 being supercharged. I didn't want something so aggressive like a G3. I want to get the, G, the G2. Mix and match, play with it, max it out. I know when I go G3, I'm probably going to upgrade my intercooler to the G4. You always want a bigger intercooler because you're blowing more air. You want to make sure that you're not maxing the intercooler out. So that's why when I got the G2, I went with the G3 intercooler. When I go to the G3, I'm going to go with the G4 intercooler. And then I'm not going to touch G4 because there's no need for it. I'm not trying to race my car. No, G3 is for the guys that might want to drag it and want to roll it. The G2 for me is mainly roll racing. Having fun on the road, you know, you, not saying you can't drag race it, but, you know, it's mainly road racing. You know, that's 5,000 and up is when that, that supercharger shine. It hits real hard at 5,000 and up. Uh, I'm not saying it's not that lazy down low. 5,000 up, it takes the fuck off. It goes. The G3, you might get around 4,000 up and it goes. And then you go to G4, very aggressive pulley, you get around 3,000 up, it's going to go. So if you like road racing, G2. You want a little bit of drag and roll racing G3. If you're trying to drag it, G4. That's just that's just the way it is. Because the, the 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 power hits you in lower RPMs than the G2 will. So that's what's going on with the car, guys. So until I get this rectified, it'll be after I get back from travel next week. Then uh I'm gonna be bring you guys some content. Of course, I gotta break the clutch in, all that good stuff there. That's why I haven't took it to the dyno yet. Because I want to get the address first. I don't want to have to pay for no fucking transmission. So I want to get that address first and then go from there. And before anyone say what well, the blower called the transmission go out, no, the transmission had weak synchros in it when I was in stock form. I didn't know. When the car was stock, it ran E85. But um, I noticed after about 6,000 miles in the car, that car was acting a little bit suspect on the uh, second, third, and sometimes third, fourth shift. And so... In stock form, those M2s, MT82s, been, has been known to malfunction. It's only after I boosted and I changed the clutch and flywheel that it acerbated the problem. Now, this transmission is running good. It's just the flywheel issue. It's not an issue with the transmission itself. So, the MT82s is more than capable of handling up to almost about... The 900 is, is the cutoff, but there are some that can handle up to 1,000. Now, if you want to make more than a thousand, or even if you just want to play a safe band caliber, and uh, that'll probably be the last major upgrade that I do would be a band caliber transmission. Um, and I think I might do that once I get to a hundred thousand miles. Just do a new transmission on there and go from there, and blah blah blah. Anyway, guys, hope y'all enjoy. I will be back after next week. More content, the fitness video that uh, I did last week. 
I still got to do a lot of editing because that is a very long video. I don't want to make it too long. I got to do a lot of editing. So uh, I will get that to you guys here um, when I get back uh, from my travels. Uh, and then from there, we'll get back to normal broadcasting, if that makes sense. Uh, of course, today is January, not January, June the 6th. So Baki Cross Kendra Ashura is on Netflix today. So you know I'm about to binge on that. I have Cop on Demon Slayer. I have caught up on the, the, the Hashra arc. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be getting my guys, uh, my opinion about that. So, I appreciate all you guys being patient with me. Understand I'm a busy person. I really do. And uh, until next time, you guys say safety, baby, boys, for a matter. I'm out of one. Peace.